people of hope, it's Pastor Mark McLean with you once again. And it's a joy to be sharing with you some news about Hope Lutheran Church, what's been going on in these last months, and where we're headed in the near future. Uh, much of this revolves around the COVID epidemic and our response to it. There's been some questions about that. I'm wondering how things are changing in this new year, particularly as numbers um, continue to go up in our area, uh, but also knowing that there's some issues happening in other churches around us. So we want to address that, and number one, by reminding you um, of what our standards are and protocols are here at Hope, and number two, letting you know kind of the planning in the future to mitigate some risk um, while keeping all of our major functions um, happening. So the first is this. I want to let you know what the protocols are if you suspect or know that you have been exposed to COVID-19. Uh, first of all, if you have any symptoms at all, if you have the coughing or the sneezing or the congestion or the fever and the aches and chills and all the things that might be associated with the flu or with a cold or anything else, you know, if you had the flu, we would also tell you uh, you shouldn't come and share that with people. You share the love of Christ, you don't share your germs. Um, so we wouldn't want you to come with that either. So if you have any of those symptoms um, that are regularly associated with being ill, please don't come to worship or other events at Hope. In fact, call and let us know that you're experiencing those. Go get checked out by a healthcare professional. Find out for your own health and well-being and your, your own peace of mind what's going on with you and make sure it's being treated properly. Um, it also mitigates any danger to other people by keeping you away uh, until you know what's happening. If you know you have been exposed to uh, COVID, even if you have no symptoms, please quarantine. Please stay in your, in your home, talk to your doctor about the right timing. CDC has guidelines on that you can find on how many days. But quarantine for that amount of time to make sure you don't develop symptoms and you're not sick. Go get a test. Um, if you get a test the next day, it's not effective to let you know uh, if you have COVID. You, need, you do need to wait a certain period of time. It's kind of that, that time of almost germination for it to show up in your system. So check those guidelines. Follow those rules. Make sure you're waiting the proper amount of time before you get a test to make sure you're clean and you're okay. If you test positive for COVID, and this came up in a question this last week um, directed to me from a member of the church, they knew they'd been tested positive, they knew they had mild symptoms, and they asked the question, and they were being very honest with this and sincere. They said, you know, how long do I have to stay away when I've been sick? Is it 14 days of quarantine? And I remind them, it's like, no, if you know that you have COVID-19, you don't stay away for a certain period of days, you don't go into public anywhere until your doctor has cleared you to go back into public. Uh, there's not a specific time where it just magically disappears after a certain number of days. You have to be sure that you are healthy. Now again, this is about taking care of your own health, but it also is about loving your neighbor as yourself and caring for those in the community, both at Hope and in the broader community. If you are in a household um, in close proximity with someone who has also been tested positive for COVID, even if you have not tested positive, know that you are in that place and you can still be a carrier of transmission on the things you're wearing and other things of that illness. So be very careful uh, about who you're around and what you do with that. It's important that we're very um, sure to not be spreading the illness, particularly in places uh, like the villages where people are in that high-risk area and also at a church where we're in closer proximity. Uh, you'll note that some of the things we've done here have continued. Continue to take um, do the screening of temperatures. We continue to have people register, which will continue into the distant future, I'm sure, registering for services. We still have um, some distance between people. We do have a higher number. We went to the percentage rule rather than the um, six-foot rule for people in worship. And we are singing, but we do still require you to wear masks throughout worship. Um, in several instances, both at Central and at the other sites, there have been people who have had the want to take off their mask when worship started. Um, perhaps after singing is done and they're just listening to the sermon, they feel that's appropriate. It is not. If you're here at, at Hope, whether you're at Central or at Everglades, or you're up at Lake Weir, when you're in the building, you need to be wearing your mask. It's an important thing that we continue to do that um, throughout the worship experience. Now, if there's anything we can do to be helpful to you or to neighbors um, who are uh, in, impacted in any way by COVID, whether they have it themselves, a family member does, they're grieving uh, because of someone else they know who is struggling with it, please let us know. We want to be a source of pastoral care and mutual consolation for the community. So please be in touch with us about that. Uh, information and, and open dialogue are so vitally important at this time. One of the steps we're looking to take now um, in, to, in order to mitigate problems in the future, after this, a lot of traveling things have happened, and after we know there have been several other larger congregations in the area affected by COVID um, since Christmas, some of which have had to close down for a period because a great number of staff are sick as well as members of the church, um, is knowing that perhaps what we need to do is do a quarantine of our own 
of our events. Now that would not include worship or education, things we consider to be vital parts of the church, or our annual meeting because we have to be um, uh, present for a quorum for that to happen, but for all other non-essential events that are happening during the week. And I know some of those feel very essential to you when you're a part of them, uh, for some of our small groups and things that happen. But we, we're looking to take in the near future, and we will let you know more about the dates uh, when we decide them, to take a two-week hiatus from those things, to give everybody some breathing space and kind of let us get our feet back on the ground, uh, to know that everyone's been kind of quarantined in that way from the events at Hope um, that are ongoing with these smaller groups where we don't have as much control sometimes over who's coming and what's happening with those, to make sure that in those moments we're being safe. So please keep your ear to the ground. We'll be sending more of that out. I think it's important for us to care for one another and the community in this way. We do not want our major areas of ministry to be impacted. Um, and here's why we're doing this. Um, we have had several people uh, over the last several months, and, and numerous, more than two or three handfuls now of people, who have been exposed to COVID unknowingly, and then have come and participated in worship, sometimes in small group activities or in helping to check people into worship and things like that, uh, who have been very much in proximity to others, who have then found out that they were with someone who was exposed, uh, or sorry, who was positive with COVID, who did not tell them that. Uh, and then they found they were exposed. Now, and for the most part, those people did not become ill themselves, but they were, they were really good about letting us know that they'd been exposed. We were able to watch and make sure there was no contact tracing that took place. On some other occasions, those people did become ill themselves after not knowing they had been exposed. Um, so those are the things you can't really um, control. You don't know if somebody you've been with has been sick if they don't tell you. And, and so you never know how that contact gets passed on. In a few rare incidents, there have been people who have participated at events here at Hope who were knowingly exposed, but felt okay and thought they were fine because they weren't sick. And so although they've been with somebody who is knowingly ill with COVID, they felt okay and came to events anyway and then became ill themselves. This flies in the face of God's call to us to care for those around us and to love our neighbor. That's a dangerous thing to do. And any one of those events, when that took place, if it happened in worship, it would close down worship. If it happened in a food pantry, it would close down our food pantry. If it happened with small groups, it would close down all small groups. Those events do not just endanger their health and the health of those around them, but the vital ministries where we are able to gather for ministry of this church. So we're able to keep those things from happening. We're going to take that little mitigation a couple weeks, and just a couple weeks from now, perhaps after our annual meeting or perhaps just before the annual meeting. And again, we're sending an email out to inform you of that. But we really want to be careful. If we know that that has happened and we see any contagion happen at all within the church, if there's anyone in close proximity, anyone gets transference at all that then becomes ill, even one case, we will be ceasing all live functions at Hope and go back to online only for a period of time. I just want to make you aware of that. It's what other churches have had to do at last minute. I want to let you know that's already a game plan we have in place. We already have some plans on how we would do that. So please bear with us in this. We are doing the best we can to continue to do live ministry as often and as fully as possible to have enriched lives of faith. But know that we also want to care for one another. And being good stewards is all about that. So until next time, blessings upon you, and I bid you peace. Bye.